Okay, so I'll, I'll speed up even more. Um, yes, I'm talking a bit about a paradigm shift. 1921, Nies van der Rohe entered a competition um, defining the paradigm shift, uh, the, a new paradigm for modernist architecture, separating core and shell. I presume architects know this project. Um, it was in 1921 with the idea of this fantastic new possibilities of technology um, that the idea was born that, um, or let's say it was, it was declared the ethical necessity for the new architecture that can no longer be called in doubt, Dropius, 1935. Architecture should be able, actually, to resolve issues. It's faster than me. Do you have an automatic something sitting on your... Today we know that the building sector is the largest consumer of energy. And we will definitely, as we have already seen, have to make a plan of how to deal with this. We will need to start to consider the entire life cycle of a build structure. Um, and we will see that uh, in this way, we might be able to stop this ongoing madness of oil consumption. The paradigm shift, while the old paradigm was centered on single buildings, the new one will necessarily deal with the built environment as a system, based on, su on a sustainable approach. One of the most influential definitions of sustainability was obviously offered by the Brundtland Report, where Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It contains within it two key con its two key concepts, the concepts of needs, in particular the essential needs for the world's poor, to which overriding priority should be given, and the idea of limitations imposed by the state of technology and social organization for the environment ability to meet present and future needs. The limitation issue can be reasonably addressed with the increased usage of renewable building resources as timber, for example. Architectural practice. This is where architects need to get involved and in so doing demonstrate the true value of architecture. A paradigm shift is called for. Maybe we can call it sustainability 2.0. Today, it is evident that public, um, to, uh, that, uh, it's, it is evident um, for the public at large to reduce energy consumption uh, is a clear need. The use of alternative, less energy consuming building materials is often accompanied by more cost. Social aspects leave people indifferent as in New York or also the South African IDP Re Reconstruction and Development Program. Um, we need to deal with cultural aspects, which are often ignored, um, as they are always subject to interpretation when referring to rich and or poor. Affordability and appropriateness are often not considered, especially not considered the spatial quality, as they seem not to affect our state of mind. Instead, we still have cheap as a synonym for ugly and oppressive. New building technology is seen as too complex to comprehend and therefore decisions are left to so-called specialists that are not necessarily interested in raising the architectural quality. It is this dilemma um, that has made us, that often has made use of so-called alternative or new building technologies a field of continuous experimentation and not a methodolog methodolog methodological approach. Is that based on money? Measuring sustainability. The need for a scientific and measurable definition of sustainability has been recognized, but today's assessment tools are merely aimed to demonstrate the reduction of energy consumption of buildings and are basically used for making fo um, for marketing, focusing on demonstrating achieved qualities 
towards clients and users. Um, I'll be jumping a few things to anticipate our, our time scheme. Um, today we're still focusing on keeping the existing by reducing. Instead of shifting towards a concept by changing the existing or, for example, reusing. In the future, evaluation and assessment tools will consequently shift from short-term to long-term observation periods. It's funny, the circle is closing. I've been um, head of the School of Architecture in Salzburg from 2004 to 2008. Timber construction and design was that course um, in Kuchel near Salzburg. Um, uh, a faculty set up by the Austrian timber industry to promote and develop specialists able to increase the use and the application of timber and timber-based products in the building industry. Funny enough, we've been running one course of 20 plus, we called it then, we should have maybe even called it 30 plus, but it's true. Timber can do much more than we would actually expect. Um, this design course, um, design and construction course as it was, um, is based on a long tradition of Austrian um, uh, craft with wood. And um, it is in the Austrian economy the second place after uh, tourism. One of the ways decided by the timber industry was to train young specialists at university level to act as professional link between the industry and the users, the planners and specifiers, the municipalities and the lawmakers, and to bring acceptance further. The entire curriculum was project-oriented and um, envisaged various phases of interaction as, as teams focused on resolving all four aspects that make up a project um, as it would occur in professional life. Out of this specific fo focus, we decided to offer students every year a chance to choose from three projects. For the second year, one of the projects would be a poverty relief project in Africa, which was to be realized during the winter holiday break in situ. With the assessment, uh, yeah, this engagement has been a chance for also for me to learn a lot about these um, kinds of projects. Um, one of the first projects, the Montic Skills Trainings Facility, um, was realized in 2006 with a group of uh, 27 volunteer students that flew to South Africa and interacted together with 27 local, uh, local volunteers um, to realize the structure in only seven weeks, from the foundations to the finished product. We then, a year later, engaged in a new project um, in Kenya, trying to um, develop a slum upgrading uh, um, 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 strategy for uh, the Matara slum, developing small modules that could easily be um, relocated within the slum structure, keeping the sense and the structure of the slum existing as, as it were, the, the architectural urban configurations, but introducing modern, so-called modern, um, architectural elements built in timber. The third project is uh, a little uh, crash we've built in the north of South Africa. Again, 30 volunteer students. That In that place we only had two um, volunteers from the community. Again, an, an entire structure built from the foundation to the finished product in only seven weeks. Here you see the happy Austrian students after the, the completion of this building. And actually, at the moment, I'm building a, a community center. It's a different approach this time. No students from Europe, direct engagement with local community. We found a supplier of uh, a sandbag building system, which we thought was very, very interesting. We've had um, a good start, and then the whole thing collapsed. It's very, very difficult to build with sandbags. We, have, we don't have the CLT effect, um, everything is very wobbly, so you need real specialists to actually make it stand upright. So we've built two out of seven units, and we're going to go back to traditional bricks on this one. 
Um, let me just jump quickly to, um, well, yeah. Um, of course, we will employ more natural and local resources, ideally renewable ones that can be harvested with non-invasive exploiting methods. We will have to understand and respect coherent building with anything... Uh, okay, let me just conclude. Um, my basic idea um, is that we will have to be able and um, compare alternative solutions in their complex context um, of ecology, economy, community, urbanism, technology, politics and culture. Um, because the value of ar architecture is less about stri striking aesthetics or impressive technology um, than it is much more about the ability to enable involvement, generate awareness, deal with uncertainty, accept complexity, comprehend diversity and respect the needs of the future. Thank you. Thank you very much.